Hello everyone and welcome to another real estate video. This is Javier Vidania, the real estate YouTube guy here in Arizona, helping you accomplish your home goals. I recently made a video uh, where I, an updated version of a video where I talked about conventional versus FHA, talk pros and cons of each one and just giving you a general guideline of each one. Everyone seemed to have liked it, but I did get some comments saying, Javier, you forgot this about FHA or Javier, you forgot about this with FHA and you know, made me think i've never actually made a video where i just talk about one loan program so what i'm going to do is do a follow-up to that video talking specifically that program which in this case it's fha now i will be making one on conventional so please stay tuned for that or it'll should be already on it if you're watching this at a later date so what i would recommend you doing is going to watch my previous video so you can get a general guideline of both loans and you can figure out which direction you want to take if the fha is the direction you want to take you're on the right video if conventional is the right uh, direction, then go to the other one or just watch all three. It's your life. You can do whatever you want. You don't have to listen to a guy on YouTube. Before I begin, let me start off with my general disclaimer. I am not a loan officer. I'm not a mortgage provider. I'm not a mortgage loan guy. I'm simply a real estate agent who's helped hundreds of houses, who's helped hundreds of houses, who's helped hundreds of people buy, who's helped hundreds of home buyers purchase houses and have a very good understanding of, of how everything works. When it's time for you to buy, I'd advise you to contact your local lender. Every state, every county is different, so please contact them. Use this as an educational tool to get you started. Historically, houses were never this expensive. If you look maybe 30, 40, 50 years ago, you'll see house prices being $10,000, $20,000, $30,000. Um, housing prices were relatively low. The wages were pretty low as well, but you know people were able to save 20%, 40%, 50%, or even buy their houses outright. As time has progressed, housing has gotten a lot Lot more expensive in the United States and our wages have stayed relatively low even right now with $15 an hour they're still pretty low for what house ranges are so because of this home ownership was getting a little bit more out of hand well this is where FHA comes in and this is why it's very essential um, it helps people who are not able to just save up 20% or 10% and let's face it it's most of us that are not able to do that achieve home ownership so the government stepping in and creating this program to essentially help its citizens its residents and anyone who who's willing to purchase a home being and able to do that without breaking the bank. Now it is marketed mostly as a first time home buyer program, but the reality is you don't need to be a first time home buyer. Just because it happens to be utilized by a lot of first time home buyers doesn't mean it's just for them. The rules as far as I know is for FHA, you're only allowed to have one at a time. And if you have one already and you wanna buy another one with FHA, you must make sure the FHA house is sold first or be refinanced it to another kind of loan before you can go FHA. So FHA, they make it easier for you to qualify. One one thing they do for starters is they don't make your down payment 20% or 50%. It's nice and easy. Three and a half percent. That's it. You get no extra bonuses for paying uh, more on top of that. They don't give you extra incentive, but you do have to at least come up with that. So three and a half percent is going to be your down payment. For starters, your credit score. Now, I said in my previous video, it ranges between 580. There's some people that go even flows 560. Some people are now saying what's well, in the mid 600s. Honestly, in my experience, it's still relatively stayed around minimum 600. I'm sure you can find a lender that can go a lot less than that, but usually there's different things that they add on top of it. So let's say 600. And here's the thing with FHA. It's, it's, if you have a 601 credit score and someone else is buying a house at the same time you are with FHA and they're at, at 800 credit score, you both are getting the same exact interest rate. You guys are both getting the same mortgage insurance as each other. FHA is truly equal, at least at that time. Now, if you look at the, maybe someone bought a house a few months after you did with FHA, it might be different there. But as far as FHA knows, this is really great for someone who might be still starting up their credit or somebody who's recovering their credit. Now, people always think, well, I need to have a 750 credit score or an 800 credit score to buy. Not true. With FHA, as long as you're in the 600s, you're in the game and you don't have to necessarily work on your credit to get it higher and higher for you to qualify for more to qualify to get better incentives with fha once you're in you're in as far as the job history still relatively the same you want to have at least two years of job history um, if you have been at the same job perfect 
If you've switched jobs, make sure that you have at least been paid the same. So what I mean by the same is your, your W-2 still. So let's say you were working somewhere W-2 for a year and a half, you switched over to another job and they pay you W-2 as well, you'll be fine. Well, the issues come up with is when you switch jobs and they switch the way they pay you via taxes. So let's say you've been working four years W-2, you switch to a new job that pays you three ten ninety nine. Now you gotta wait another two years for that. Now what's great about FHA that I've actually gone wrong in the past, but I'm correcting it now. So the debt to income ratio, and for those who don't know, please watch the video. Um, the debt to income ratio is actually a lot more flexible with FHA. I used to think it was less, more strict, but really it's more flexible. I think my lender just told me that you can go as high as 56% on the debt to income ratio. So in layman terms, what that basically means is if you have a little more debts on your monthly payments to your income, you're able to qualify for a little more. So with conventional, you're gonna qualify for a little less. For FHA, you're gonna qualify for a little more because they're a little bit looser on the restrictions of having your debt to income ratio at a certain amount. This sounds like perfect for basically any person who's buying their first house and it usually is but the con of this that people don't like about is the mortgage insurance so for those who don't know mortgage insurance is essentially uh, an insurance that's being placed on a loan not to protect you but to protect the lender from you so usually in theory it depends on how high risk you are if you're very high risk they're gonna give you the loan but they're gonna give you a lot higher mortgage insurance payment every month so we're talking maybe 200 or 300 dollars on top of your monthly payment and that's included in your monthly payment. So with FHA, you're automatically assumed to be high risk. Now, it doesn't matter if you have a much higher credit score. It doesn't matter if you've never missed a payment. If you're FHA, the government's already going to assign a label to you. You're high risk. So because of that, you're going to have mortgage insurance for your entire life. The way mortgage insurance is assessed, I'm sure there's a way to figure that out, but I actually honestly don't know. But what I've personally seen is it's usually higher. So um, on average, at least in the Arizona area, $200 to $400,000 price range, I'm seeing it between $100 to $200. So with FHA, it might be even the 150 range. So your mortgage insurance is permanent and it happens to be a little higher. Now this sucks because imagine like you're almost paying off your house and like literally you owe thousands of dollars and you, you've gone, you're like, it's year 29, you're an old lady, you're an old man, and you're like ready to pay it. And you're still paying this mortgage insurance. Like they still don't trust that you're not gonna finish paying off your loan. It doesn't make sense at all, but they're gonna tack this on forever. However, right now and historically, the FHA interest rate has always been really low. Unless you had a really great credit score with conventional, the FHA interest rate's usually lower than conventional. Because of the slow interest rate, it offsets the extra money being placed on your monthly payment from the mortgage insurance. So overall, in my opinion, in my experience, I have seen FHA be a lot more flexible and lower with the monthly payment than conventional for your average first time home buyer. This is why I recommend FHA for someone who's might be thinking short term, a house that you might live with for five years, maybe 10 years. Yeah, mortgage insurance is, is nice for the lender, but not for you. The one thing conventional does right is if you don't put 20% down, eventually as you live in the house, your loan amount is going down and your value is going up. So as you put things in, in value into your property, you change your cabinets, you add a pool, you uh, make a mural of Javier Vidanya in the bedroom. Um, not the bedroom, that sounds bad. Let's the living room, let's go with the living room. Um, then your value is going up. So eventually, once you reach that 80-20 sweet spot, uh, meaning you pay 20% off of the value of the property, that maybe is not from your initial value, maybe your value has gone up, then you drop your mortgage insurance entirely. So with conventional, you're working towards paying that off. You're incentivized to make extra payments towards your principal. You're incentivized to add value to your property. When I say short term, I mean five, 10 years. After that time, you either sell it and go get another house and make sure your next house is conventional or you refinance that right at that point and hopefully you have enough equity to get out of it and go to conventional. With FHA with three and a half percent down, your $300,000 house should have a down payment of 10,500. So in theory, your loan amount or when you're like signing your documents, it should say like 289,500, right? Because you're putting $10,500 down, whatever happens to closing costs happens to closing costs. So your loan amount should be 289,500. But what happens with FHA and everyone always freaks out is it's always like five or six thousand dollars more. They're like, Javier, what the hell? What's going on? When you're at the signing table, you're gonna realize that your loan amount's actually gonna say like 294 or 295. Well, with FHA, they always add a 1.75% upfront mortgage insurance charge on your loan. 
and it you don't it, you, you do pay for it but it gets added on on your loan yeah that kind of sucks but FHA still is a solid option for those who are looking to get into homeownership. Remember guys, your first house isn't your forever house and it shouldn't be. It's just to get started. You're on the road. First car you buy isn't your dream car unless you go straight into debt or you got, you got some money. And if you got some money, hit me up. <laughs> buy my ebook. If you have a higher credit score, and you've taken care of your life and your finances and your credit, good for you. Go watch the conventional video. But for everyone else who made mistakes like I did, we're not in a well equipped with a super high credit score at, at 20 or 19 whenever we bought the house. But we got into it because FHA helped us. We got a great monthly payment and we wouldn't be where we are today if it wasn't for those first two FHA loans. So don't feel bad if you have to go FHA, just work your way out of it. You know, there is a way for you to pay your mortgage insurance off initially. I think you pay like, I don't know, I talk to your lender. Um, you can put like, basically it's always near three and a half percent or the two or 3%. Um, but honestly, it's going to pay, save you money on the mortgage insurance, but it's going to disappear. Like maybe consider going, putting it towards your principal. Like, I don't know, there's all, it's an option for you if you're thinking. But anyways, guys, I hope this video helped you understand FHA a little more. If I forgot something else, Gosh, leave it in the comment below and I'll reply and I'll pin it so people can see what I forgot. Cause you guys love telling me when I'm wrong. It's okay. I love you guys. For everyone else out there, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your time. Um, if you're looking for a real estate agent in the Phoenix, Arizona area, my contact information is below. I also have an app, Home Goals, on the App Store or Google Play Store. Download it, start looking at homes for only people in the Arizona area, by the way. Uh, everyone else, I have this great ebook with some great packages attached to it that goes over the whole home buying process. Only 10 bucks, it's down below, click the link, do what you gotta do. And um, I'm also starting to do a little more live streaming, so I hope you guys don't mind. I'm gonna be doing them here as well. And also on Twitch, I'm thinking about maybe twitching, Twitch streaming some games once in a while, because if you guys don't know, I like to game once in a while, so I'm thinking about doing that uh, just for fun. Nothing too serious. But if, if you guys ever catch me on the live, you can ask me any questions there, um, and I'm here to help. Other than that, guys, listen, I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for watching. For those who are looking for the conventional video, it'll be out in a few days. So thank you, guys. Have a great day. Thank you.